What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna share my experience buying and selling Amazon return pallets. Now, Amazon has over 10 million orders a day, and according to their data, they have between five and 10% returns. So let's assume 5% returns. It means that they have 500 of these pallets produced every single day. One of these pallets has about 1,000 items in there. I'm mostly sold through. This is the last five pallets out of 19 pallets I've sold so far. A lot of people are wondering how much of it is garbage, how much it was awesome. How many sets of AirPods and Louis Vuitton walls did I find? I'll go over all that in today's video. Please smash the like button, consider subscribing. Today we're actually gonna go inside. Let's do it. All right guys, so when you buy Amazon returns, you can buy them manifested, which means you know what every single thing is, or you can buy them unmanifested. I chose Amazon General Merchandise Unmanifested. I did not know how much food was gonna be in it. It is a staggering amount. I would say about 40% of the entire lot was expired food. So this is like expired peanuts, coffee, corn nuts. And what's interesting about that is you're not, I don't think you're allowed to even donate it, so I'm actually going to throw away like eight or nine pallets of just food garbage, which is staggering, it's super wasteful. There's like a difference between use by day and actual expiration day. I would say all this food's probably edible, but I feel a little weird selling it for a profit. I also feel a little weird donating it. Um, what we did was we actually just sold it all on Whatnot. My user code is whatnot.com slash invite slash daily refinement. If you buy something from anybody on there using my code, you get $15 off your first purchase and it really helps the channel. So please sign up for Whatnot. This right here was five pallets that we sold in one day. It was very interesting. We'll go over in just a second and look at what kinds of things were actually in these pallets, but there is a lot of trash produced. Every single item is like in a plastic wrapper, boxes, tape. So it is really messy to sell Amazon returns. So I don't know if I would recommend you do it without a lot of space, but you can just order one pallet at a time, which is, I think a little more risky than what I did because when you buy a larger amount, you get the opportunity to get the good ones and the bad ones. And if you buy only a small amount, you could just get one pallet of expired food and lose all your money. All right guys, so a lot of people are wondering what kinds of things you find. So I'd say maybe 10% of it is clothing. So you have like Amazon, regular brands, but you also have regular brands that sell their merchandise on here like Hurley, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, all those brands are in here. I would say the clothing was about 10% of the lot. You have lots and lots of food that is not expired. So tons of coffee, tons of cookies, biscuits. There's tons and tons of toys. So over here, uh, we have a bubble lawnmower, which is one of my daughter's favorite toys. Lots of bubble lawnmowers, bubble guns, bubble ones, bubble um, liquid. There's so many bubble related things. I'd say a good chunk of the kids stuff is bubble related or bubble adjacent. So I feel like that might be a good thing to invest in. There's a lot of arts and crafts stuff. We sold a lot of these tie dye party kits, um, a lot of tools that people use around the house, like, you know, fabric shavers, lint rollers, tons of phone cases, tons of lawn irrigation equipment, tons of yoga mats. Now, a lot of people are saying, Chris, haven't you niched down into the women's clothing market? I have, but you can see that all of this stuff for the most part fits in my same shipping system. I would say that 99% of the stuff that I sell either has a box that I can ship it in directly, or it comes in a shape that can fit inside of here. We also have larger boxes and larger bags for different things because sometimes, even though I sell clothing, our boxes can be up to 80 pounds if people do a bulk order. So I'm already set up to sell. This is not any different than what I normally do. The only difference is that sometimes items do not sell because a single phone charger is not gonna sell on its own unless somebody in the auction actually has that phone case. So what we end up doing is, if it doesn't sell, we add more stuff to it until it sells. With Amazon returns, it's really easy to build up a death pile. And I don't, I don't want a death pile. So items get sold or given away as we run the stream. So far, if you look at these racks, we have some being shipped up here and we sell them in sets of around 500 at a time. They're selling Amazon returns over here as well. Um, you can see how varied the merchandise is, but honestly, most items are really small. Everybody likes selling stuff that can go ground advantage or the, the Amazon has their own delivery service, which is relatively inexpensive. It's like five or six dollars shipping per package. So there's also a ton of lunch bags, um, Ziploc bags, stuff related to people cooking at home. I think right now more and more people are cooking at home. There's obviously tons of books, notebooks, calendars, mattress covers, so many cool things that you can see. It's just kind of sort of like 
If you're wondering what's selling, it's mainly what people actually use every day. Everyday items is what's selling most of the time. And I would say that the 99% of it is like $30 or less on Amazon. So I'm hoping really to only get $5 from each item. $5 on each item, you would make a really good profit. But you just have to have the patience to sell it. Now, I would definitely not sell this on whatnot. I'm sorry, on eBay. I wouldn't sell it on eBay because it's too much listing for too little return. I recommend if you're gonna sell stuff on eBay, you would look through this entire thing and you'd only sell like the new in box stuff and some of the more rare expensive items that are over $30, otherwise you would never get through it. We have a faux leather jacket that probably is worth 30 or $40, but I'm happy with $8 for it on whatnot. Really, really important to be able to combine shipping because People don't want to pay shipping every single item. They're happy to pay it for multiple items, but they want to pay the actual shipping cost. So for me, most of my items ship for the exact cost. I should have kept these uh, dog on premises signs for the new warehouse. Um, but a lot of signage, a lot of stickers, a lot of, a lot of different Pokemon. So it's like, it is really cool buying this stuff. Now, I don't know if I would reorder to be honest because it is a tremendous amount of waste. Um, as far as the profit margin goes, because I'm on the platform and whatnot, these kind of work because people get bored on the app and you would not get bored watching one of these shows because it, literally every single item is completely different, different category. If you have ADD and you want to waste money, this would be the perfect stream for you to go into. And you could, if you wanted to waste $100, you could get like 20 things. Versus like online, $100 only gets you three or four things and this would be cheaper than a movie and you would get a lot of entertainment from it and a cool story. So I feel like a lot of this stuff will eventually be sold live stream. A lot of people also don't know that Amazon, they are one of the largest live streamers in the United States, except for they only live stream brand new products. So you can look up Amazon live streaming. I think Amazon live streaming is much, much, much bigger than whatnot. Um, but again, they don't sell returns. They only sell their brand new stuff. And like I was saying before, there are 500 pallets of Amazon returns produced every single day. So like, if you're looking to sell this, um, I have a contact, you guys could reach out to me at chrisadailyrefinement.com and I'll connect you with my contact, but I think that my contact overcharges a bit. I would recommend you try to find somebody local. Um, my guy does the entire United States and when he finds them close to me, he'll let me know, like, Chris, do you wanna try a truck of Walmart returns, a truck of Kmart returns, and I'll look at what's in it. This is the first time ever I took a risk on buying stuff that wasn't manifested at all. Amazon General Merchandise could be literally anything. It could just be all iPhone chargers. Um, luckily, it was a good mix and I will make some money, but it is a lot of work for 26 pallets. Luckily, we're gonna sell the entire thing in under a week, the whole truck in less than a week, and I can go do other things. But I think that it's really cool. With my whatnot operation, I can actually test a niche in a week, sell through the entire thing, and I usually minimum um, make enough to pay all my staff, keep the lights on, and a little bit of profit. I may not kill it, but I have the system built to move a huge volume and test different products. So I haven't done Home Depot yet or Walmart. Curious about Home Depot now that whatnot introduced local pickup. So maybe a llama or I can say pick it up local or pay $300 to ship it. And maybe somebody locally will come pick that up. I am working on a pickup center about one mile from here because I don't want people coming to my warehouse. So um, if something ends up selling, I'm probably gonna get like a locker that people can go there and pick up the items. So very interesting. I do recommend you try an Amazon pallet for fun. Uh, if you have about a thousand bucks burning a hole in your pocket and you wanna try buying a, a random Amazon return pallet, you could get one that's manifested or just Go crazy and buy the general merchandise one. It's gonna be the cheapest, but have the largest range. All right guys, before we sign off, let me know in the comment section below, would you buy Amazon returns to resell? Would you only buy ones that are manifested? Because you could buy those, but they're much more expensive. Would you just roll the dice? And how would you sell it? Would you go flea market? Would you go eBay? Would you dispose most of it? Would you do live auction? There's lots of websites like Highbid, whatnot. Even the, the big guys like eBay eventually will have live auctioning for everybody. So it's all moving that direction. The local live auction is the oldest trick in the book. It's been around forever. So you can just host a live auction and get random people to come on Craigslist, just like a garage sale. You can still sell most of it, but 
I'm kind of leaning towards this is stuff that should be sold at the flea market for one to five dollars. That's how I would approach this if I didn't have a whatnot stream. So let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, make progress daily.